Hey friend, Brandon here. This is quite unexpected. There's a report that Google will finally make their own custom chips uh, by going to Samsung. Yeah, to develop a custom Exynos chip for their upcoming Google Pixel phones. There are even claims that it'll be in the Google Pixel 5 later this year. I'm a bit skeptical about this. Oh, and for those of you who are not in the know, going with the Samsung Exynos processor isn't too popular right now. It's actually a terrible idea to go with any current generation Exynos processor. Yeah, I have some thoughts. Let's talk about it because this is Tech Today. This video is sponsored in part by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people. Get started with Skillshare now. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free two-month trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Please share, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video, and uh, take control of what you watch rather than let the algorithm decide for you. Now, in order to understand why Google needs to make their own chip, you have to look to Apple. It's quite undeniable that Apple's investment in designing their own chips have produced incredible dividends for them now. The Apple A13 Bionic has a significant lead in performance over the Snapdragon 855 chip and still maintains a lead in nearly every category compared to the latest Snapdragon 865 chips. The area where it falls behind the 865 in benchmark tests are graphics, but practical results like video rendering have shown that Apple still leads. This doesn't even take into account how much more efficient Apple's chips are, which provides a notable battery life improvement over their previous chips. Combined with an increased battery size, the battery life on the iPhone 11 Pros have been a high mark of praise. And this all started because Apple co-designed their own chips with Samsung on the A4 chip which we'd come to see in 2010 in the Apple iPhone 4. This all started in 2008 and was led by Johnny Shruji, a veteran of Intel and IBM, and the other Johnny that has had a dramatic contribution to Apple's success. In the same year that Shruji joined, Apple acquired the chipmaker PA Semi and their talent to begin designing and developing their own chips. After the A4 chip, Apple no longer co-developed their chips with Samsung. Those were some big moves only a year after the first iPhone came out, but in the span of a decade, that investment growth and knowledge and maturity has put them ahead of the competition while keeping everything in-house. And that's why Google needs to develop their own chips. They're heavily reliant on Qualcomm for their processors, which puts them behind Apple. At best, it puts them in line with other Android devices in terms of processor performance. It even sounds like they'll fall behind if they don't go with the latest Qualcomm processor because of the significant increase in price to use a Snapdragon 865 processor and the additional 5G chip needed on top of it. That's why the Samsung Galaxy S20 series is so expensive compared to the S10 series, and even the upcoming OnePlus device seems to have a notable increase in price. Add in Qualcomm's lack of support for processors after only two or three years, and now you have problems keeping older devices software up to date. On the Apple side of things, iOS 13 is available for the iPhone 6S. That's five generations of iPhones. So while I don't think specs alone make the phone, it is hard to deny that Google needs to make their own chips to have control over their software update cycle, reduce costs, optimize the hardware with the software more, increase performance performance and have the expertise to make additional chips like Apple has done. For Apple, that has allowed them to make chips like the T2 chip and create a powerful and robust wearable like the Apple Watch that isn't limited by Qualcomm's disinterest in wearables. Seriously, Wear OS is being held back so badly by Qualcomm. But we have to be fair, Google has been attempting to do that. Google acquired chipmaker Agnilux in 2010, which was founded by former Apple employees who were part of making that Apple A4 chip. And yet, we still don't have a Google design processor a decade later. Google seemed to have ramped up their efforts to develop their own chips in-house in 2017 when they hired John Bruno, a former Apple chip designer. At this time, the Google Pixel 2 would be released less than half a year later containing the Pixel Visual Core chip, one of the only custom chips we've seen from Google to date. Obviously, John Bruno's impact on Google's chip development wouldn't be realized much in that chip. Sadly, even Rick Osterloh, the head of Google's hardware division, said that they're not developing chips themselves, but working with Qualcomm. This is a, a bit confusing since we now have the Titan security chip and the Pixel Neural Core chip that replaced the Pixel Visual Core chip. Maybe he meant that they're just going to focus on simple supporting chips and that's it. Despite Google not making their own chips, they would continue to hire more experts in this field from Qualcomm and Intel. But in less than two years, Google lost three significant members of the chip team. Vinod Tramarty, who used to work at Qualcomm, and two that formerly worked at Apple, Manu Galati and John Bruno. Yes, John Bruno was at Google for less than two years. The two former Apple designers went on to form their own semiconductor company called Nuvia. To be frank, I'm quite curious to find out what they worked on at Google because they still don't have a custom system on a chip. So what is Google doing now? Well, they seem to be investing in chip design since they hired a little over a dozen microchip engineers in Bengal 
Nauru, India, with an eventual goal to increase that to around 80 people. There are even job listings available for chip lead and chip technologists. Listings say that they can't just purchase off-the-shelf hardware, we've got to make it ourselves, and that the role is to lead a cross-functional team responsible for delivering a world-class silicone over the full product cycle from architecture spec to commercialization. Now, this could be for their tensor processors and not for mobile processors, but I'm not sure. Either way, the reality is that Google seems to be confused about what they're doing with chip design in their smartphones. And they've managed to squander nearly a decade of time to figure out how to make their own chips like Apple. And that takes us to an interesting rumor reported by Sam Mobile that states Google is going to Samsung to help them make their own custom Exynos processor using a five nanometer processor and octa-core design containing two Cortex A78 CPU cores, two Cortex A76 CPU cores, and four Cortex A55 CPU cores along with the Google Visual Core ISP and NPU. Some have claimed that this will actually show up in the upcoming Google Pixel 5 coming out this year. Now, this is not exactly the best news for most people, considering there's a large uproar over the Exynos processors showing up in current Samsung Galaxy S20 devices. Customers are upset because Exynos processors perform much slower than the Snapdragon processors currently found in Galaxy S20 devices in other parts of the world. It is so bad that there is a change.org petition that is close to hitting the goal of 50,000 signatures at the time of filming asking Samsung to stop using Exynos processors in their phones. The last thing that we need is a Google Pixel device with a processor that is way behind the offerings from Qualcomm, which is behind the offerings from Apple. But I, I'm a bit doubtful. There are many reasons for why I doubt this rumor is true. First of all, Sam Mobile's source came from some random person's suite that references a random forum post by another random person that we don't know. I'm not familiar with this website and why it's something to be taken seriously. Second, the Pixel Visual Core has been surpassed by the Pixel Neural Core, which contains the visual cord. Why the report uses that branding isn't all that reassuring. Additionally, the talent that Google acquired from Apple, Qualcomm, and other companies have experience working with Taiwan Semiconductor, or TSMC. This is the company that manufactures the majority of chips right now for companies like Apple, AMD, Samsung, Qualcomm, and so many more. TSMC's research, development, and fab process is the reason why AMD is able to leapfrog Intel so much and why Apple is able to have a smaller nanometer process than Intel. Because they are the backbone of so many companies' processors, I bought some of their stock. By the way, if you want some free stocks, you can sign up for Weeble and deposit $100 and you'll get two free stocks, one of which is valued up to $1,400. There's a link down in the description for that, alongside the link for Robinhood, which also gives you a free stock on sign up. Anyways, their talent working on chips has experience working with TSMC. So why would they suddenly start working and designing chips with Samsung? It doesn't make a ton of sense. On top of that, and probably the most problematic point is that code has been found in multiple areas, most recently in the Google Pixel camera app pulled from the Google Pixel 4a device that was leaked. In that code, it references that the Snapdragon 765G chips are being used in the development of the Google Pixel 5. I talked about this in detail in my video up here that also talks about what we'll likely see in the Google Pixel 4a. Google seems to be aiming for a lower cost processor to prevent these huge price jumps we're seeing in devices using the Snapdragon 865 processor. So the report saying that Google will launch a processor made with Samsung later this year seems quite inconsistent with more tangible data. I highly doubt that this rumor is true. However, there's a tiny bit that does make sense. First, Samsung's Exynos processors are changing so that they use stock ARM CPU cores and are using AMD Radeon graphics. This is similar to what other companies are doing when they work with TSMC. If this is indeed true, which is in question, Google is continuing to work with TSMC knowledge through Samsung, who is now working through TSMC instead of its own in-house team, which was laid off in November of 2019. Kind of a roundabout way of doing things, I think, right? <laughs> Second, they may be working with Samsung to help them co-develop the processor, much like what Apple did with the A4 chip. That would mean that Google is relying on some of the talent and experience of Samsung to help with their custom chip, assuming Samsung does have talent with that knowledge already. Either way, Google desperately needs help with talent and experience right now. If they were to start from scratch within the past year or two, I would be doubtful that they'll be able to learn how to make a system on a chip and bring it to mark quickly and with ease. You know what I don't have doubts about and is easy to learn on? This video sponsors Skillshare. Skillshare offers a ton of creative classes for every season of life to give you inspiration, explore new skills, or get lost in creativity with millions of other members in the Skillshare community at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I know times are pretty tough for a lot of us right now with everything going on. Some of you have lost jobs, are worried about losing a job, and some of you are working from home. If you're like me, you're also struggling 
struggling with motivation. I believe something like Skillshare can help in these times by giving you an outlet to explore your creativity, to break up your day and help you focus on self-care. Their writing and drawing classes are really great for that. You could discover a new skill or work on an existing skill to make you more valuable for your current job or potential jobs that you may be applying for in the future. There are great classes on entrepreneurship, putting together an online store, coding, marketing, and more. Or maybe you just need to explore how to get yourself organized, motivated, and productive. I'm currently watching Productivity Masterclass, create a custom system that works by Thomas Frank. Plus, being able to do this with other Skillshare members makes it tons of fun, and we all need a bit of community right now. Get started with Skillshare now. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this portion of the video. So what do you think about this rumor? I highly doubt it, and there seems to be some really problematic evidence for it being true in the near term. But who knows? Maybe this report is right after all, but we'll have to see at the end of the year. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord server. Help us stick for some information. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.